Hello, I'm Fiona. And I'm Kat. And we are the Education Managers for the Outdoor and Woodland Learning Project, which basically means that over the past five years, we've been working with all the schools and nurseries in the local area to help facilitate outdoor learning sessions for them. Those schools are Ackleti Bowie Primary, Loch Inver Primary, Scowrie Primary, Ullapool Primary, Bad Call and Scorrig Primary, Ullapool High School, and the nursery schools for Ackleti Bowie, Loch Inver and Scowrie too. And over these past five years, we have developed several programmes which we've been running with these schools. We've utilised the discovery level of the John Muir Award as a framework to develop a transition programme for the P7s of the primary schools that feed into Ullapool High School. This offers the opportunity for P7s to meet and get to know each other before going up to high school. The programme spans the academic year and follows the theme links between our favourite wild places. So the P7s from each primary school discover a wild place local to them, explore this space, get to know it and they take part in conservation activities to help care for it. And then they share their patch with the other P7s. So all the P7s get together in one place and those from that area will deliver activities to the, the rest of the P7s. The programme culminates in a celebratory walk up a local mountain, Kunyag, to get a different perspective on the area we live and see how all these places that we've been exploring together connect up within the landscape. Also, if the weather plays ball, the uh, P7s receive their John Muir Award certificates at the top of the mountain. And for most, this is their first time walking to the summit of a local mountain. Hill to Grill was one of our most innovative programmes. A large part of land management in Quirk and Assent involves controlling deer in order to maintain a balanced ecosystem. A byproduct of this management is a superbly healthy and sustainable food in the form of venison. Around this management there are so many aspects that both link into the curriculum and also provide opportunities for the future for young people of the area. The programme looked at all these aspects in context, demonstrating the real world applications. It was also a great opportunity to work with several experienced qualified individuals and partner organisations and local estates, showing the pupils what it's really like to do certain kinds of jobs linked to land management, such as deer stalker, ecologist, ranger, outdoor learning leader, conservation volunteer. The programme was spread over five days, including an introduction to why stalking is carried out, then a day on the hill with stalkers looking for deer to capture them on camera which also included lots of discussion whilst actually being on the ground under active management. The third day, often the favourite of the pupils, was a hands-on approach to deer biology looking at a freshly culled deer carcass on the hill. It was then back to the larder to further examine the carcass, including skinning it and hanging it in the chiller. With a here's one I prepared earlier approach, venison burgers just barbecued finished off the day for all. Back at the school for the fourth and fifth days, the pupils developed their own burger recipe and using the information they had learnt around deer management, put together packaging for their burger and a marketing campaign. In a great British Bake Off meets the Apprentice style finale, a panel of judges selected their favourite burger. In May, we offer S1s of Ullapool High School a residential trip on the community owned island and core P partner, Isle Martin. S1s arrive by ferry, set up camp and spend the following four days taking part in activities that include kayaking, skiffing, seashore exploration, woodland immersion and a mini camping expedition to another part of the island. The evenings tend to be filled with student-led games and debates and a diary room is set up and available in one of the croft houses to document experiences and thoughts throughout the four days. And we also lead reflective activities on the final day just to look back on the time spent together. So the residential is an opportunity for a digital detox as well with phones discouraged and a focus on time spent connecting with each other and the island environment. So everyone chips in and works together and we also discovered that it's just a great opportunity for social learning through the experiences that unfold as well on top of the various activities and adventurous aspects of the trip. Health and well-being plays a fundamental role within outdoor learning and it feeds into everything we deliver to a greater or lesser extent simply through our inherent links with the natural world and the myriad health benefits including mental, physical and emotional of being outdoors. It's
One of the more well-being focused programs we offer is Mindfulness in the Woods, which directly explores our relationship with ourselves while immersed in a woodland environment. We have a teepee tent for shelter and the sounds, smells and sensations of nature to enhance these explorations. Mindfulness practice combined with nature immersion complement and enhance each other beautifully. Being more mindful enables us to appreciate the beauty and aliveness around us, while being surrounded by the dynamic rhythm and flow of nature deepens the experience that mindfulness provides. And so this eight week programme offers an experiential, hands-on and progression-based approach. The aims of the programme include equipping our young people with tools to nurture happiness and kindness, tending to difficult feelings while developing resilience and feeling empowered to make choices about life and learning, all while nurturing deeper connections with the natural world. Some of my favourite memories come from the weekly outdoor sessions that have been a staple part of the project. From the forest school programme run as part of leader training in the early part of the project to the regular sessions with nursery and primary school aged children between and after the lockdown periods. These sessions particularly brought such a welcome return to normality for both pupils and staff. The topics you can cover outdoors are endless. Some of the topics in just the last 12 months have included dragonflies, mindfulness, climate literacy, woodland exploration and conservation skills, den building, how to tie knots and make cord, tool use, how to have a safe campfire, badgers, owls, birds. What about predators? There's a predator! Hello, I'm a Bobby. What about, where are you? I'm over here. Ball. Yes. Documentary making, peat bogs, seashore exploration, food chains, storytelling, bumblebees. nature alphabet and beach cleaning. All of these topics link into the curriculum. It's amazing how much maths there is in the bird's nest or a mud kitchen. Wait, we've been doing maths the whole time. It's and all a conspiracy. Like, yes. Well, now we're like, <laughs> oh, right, maths. We've been outside for all these sessions using the places within walking distance of the schools. And alongside all the learning about the various topics, there's also learning to care for these places and by extension, the wider world around. There have been amazing opportunities to link into other partner projects. Some examples are the Clacktol Brock project, where the S2s got to experience living in the Iron Age, the Sylvan Path project, where primary pupils learnt all about path building, the Woodland project, where Lochinver Preschool started a new woodland at Inchtadam, and the Artist in Residence project, where aspiring high school artists met professional artists making a career from their art. The R project has also been a true community project in that many other local outdoor leaders have assisted with our adventures. We truly believe that the Outdoor and Woodland Learning project has really benefited the community um, and had a positive impact for the area. First and foremost, we've been able to offer regular opportunities for the young people of Koyakanasins to engage with the natural environment and cultural heritage around them. This has averaged 1,000 individual engagements per academic year, and that's obviously prior to COVID. And David Attenborough's quote always really sticks in my mind with this work. We won't protect what we don't care about, and we won't care about what we haven't experienced. And for me that summarises the main benefit of this project, in that outdoor learning bridges that gap between formal learning, the world around us and our place as part of it. So there's increased awareness of what is going on, direct connections are being made, it nurtures relationships, generates respect and the learning itself is brought to life in context of this, in the context of the world around us. Another of the major successes of the Outdoor and Woodland Learning project has been cross-collaborative working with individuals from partner organisations and the local schools. Without the joint up working, input and assistance of so many passionate people, much of our work would not have been possible. So having this collaborative approach has really enhanced the outdoor learning opportunities we've been able to offer. And on top of that, it's just a really wonderful and joyful way to work. We've formed relationships and connections with so many different people that make up this community. And I also just really love how the young people we work with will be bearing witness to this. 
to adults with different skill sets and from different backgrounds with their own passions working together to achieve something amazing and just beyond that label of child, teenager or adult at the end of the day we're just a bunch of people of different ages living within Koyak and Asint, working together and learning from each other but don't just take our word for it here are some of the things that have been said of the Outdoor and Woodland Learning Project. Hi, I'm Colin Masterson. I'm head teacher of Loch Ember and Appleby Primary Schools. And I've been involved with the Coal Project for the last year and a half. And I, w I wish it was longer. They've been fantastic. They come along to our schools on a weekly basis through hail, sleep, sunshine, midges, lots of midges and they provided fantastic outdoor learning opportunities for all our kids from nursery through to primary seven with all the work being differentiated uh, and set at the right level for the children that are taking part there's been times when we've gone to the beach and had to evacuate because we had a snowstorm and that wasn't in winter time uh, there's been other times we've gone filming down at the beach and we've found fantastic creatures. There's been a range of stuff. We've studied badger sets on the hill. We've looked at deer stalking and deer management. We've looked at so many different things. It's really hard to fit them all in this small piece. So I would just like to say thank you very much to Paul and to Fiona and Kat for all their hard work and also the fact that they're funding for staff to go on Woodland Activity trainer course so that they can continue the outdoor learning at both schools. It's just a fantastic opportunity. So thank you Cole. What do you enjoy about outdoor learning? I quite like finding the things. Mm -hmm. Why do you enjoy that? Because I want to be an explorer when I'm older. I like the nature thing because I love seeing nature things. There's all different things you can explore in the world. people know more about nature these days because I feel a lot of people just stay on their screens and don't really look at nature. Yeah, all they do is go to the air and take a car from the school. It's fun to get back to the classroom and it's really fun to explore new areas. <laughs> Probably one of my best memories was like going to the white shore and making our own fires with the sticks mm -hmm. and marshmallows. Uh, I like building dens. Yeah, building dens is fun. Because it includes teamwork. The delivery of programmes and sessions with schools has covered the bulk of our work, but alongside this we have developed and obtained a pool of activities and resources which we're in the process of assimilating and organising to be made available to the local schools. 
We've also used our experience in discovering and trialling various areas for outdoor learning over the past five years to create outdoor learning guides, which on completion will be made available to the schools we've worked with. And this is with the desire to support the continuation of outdoor learning in the area. So what happens after the OWL project? In preparation for this, there have been funded Woodland Activity Leader training qualifications, along with outdoor first aid courses for local teachers. Continuing professional development training delivered by the OWL project, including looking at the logistics of outdoor learning, along with ideas for curriculum delivery. A stock of outdoor equipment has been built up and will be available for the local schools to access. This, along with a resource of curriculum linked activities, are part of the legacy of the OWL project. It is recognised these resources will require some management along with a level of support for the schools. All this will require funding, albeit at a lower amount than during the project. It was this that prompted the commissioning of a feasibility study. This study looked into whether some form of commercial enterprise linked to woodland learning could assist financially with the future maintenance of the project's legacy. The report concluded that although the margins are likely to be small, it would be worth testing this with a pilot. So that's a wee snapshot into the Outdoor and Wooden Learning Project. It's been an incredible five years, obviously not without its challenges due to the current circumstances we find ourselves in, but it has just been a joy and an absolute privilege to work with the local young people and be a part of their own personal journeys. And we continue ours with so many connections made and just a fabulous array of memories to look back on with a smile. So to everyone who has made this project the success it's been, a big thank you and thank you to you for watching. Bye. enjoyed the project? Yeah. So do your best happy faces of enjoyment. Yay! It's not the end of the world if you let us have more woods time. <laughs>